Oh, four and six, seven, six, seven, six, seven, six, seven, 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 seven,
that implied that the individual is not on the bag. No. So in a sense, there's no other name in what you want to say, but referring to the power of God in Christ. So that's where my authority comes from. Now, it's very difficult for uh, people of different faiths to understand the theme and you know, what it means for me to be God as well, and all those things, and I get that that's confusing. And plus, when you're in different belief systems, and Christians, I want to hear about this all the time out there now. Don't believe things about an other belief system just because you told them. We see this about Muslims all the time. I hear all kinds of garbage that is taught to me this what Muslims believe that is not. I hear about years as well. And I hear about all kinds of different belief systems. You don't like when people do it for you, don't do it for them. But Christianity, it's not about, oh, if you're not a Christian, you're not in a club and you don't get in. That's not what it, and that's how it always comes out founded. It's not about that at all. If you uh, think about being in a home that's on fire, and a fire department coming, and a firefighter cutting a circular exit for you, you wouldn't look at that firefighter and say, well, God, you know what? I grew up believing that I'm supposed to exit up to, out of a square hole should I be prophesied. You receive the salvation and you say, you say thank you. But when it comes to God, then it becomes a battle front for the different ideas rather than a search for truth. It becomes a battle front of this is what I believe, this is what I was taught, so this is the truth. No. And as I said before, Christian, Muslim, and Jews, and all the rest can be all wrong, but they can't be all right because the very nature of the belief system are different and contradictory. So if someone says this is black and someone says this is white, they can both be wrong at the blue. But they can't be simultaneously right. And therein lies the the the, the right. It is to search out and to seek without bias based on what you grew up with or what you're comfortable with or any of those things. And really search and seek that which is true. Because it's true. Not because it's always what you believe, not because your parents believe it, not because it's convenient for you, but because it's true. And that should be the concern. Whether it's Islam, whether it's Judaism, whether it's Christianity, not on this show. Tell me Jesus Christ that. What do you think we're going to be teaching? What do you think we're going to be teaching? This show is unabashedly called Christianity. Why would it not be? But ultimately, above all things, this show is focused on truth. Teaching truth, knowing truth, spreading truth, and being accountable to that truth. And that's what's most important. That is truly the focus of the program. Speaking truth. Just to say, protect all things, hold fast to that which is true, which is good, which is righteous. And that is the very purpose of this program. As you go through the hustling bustle, and I'm pretty sure i some of you, yes, probably know, but in the last minute, yes. And I'm um, making sure that spending time with some of Remember that. But it's not just about my team or your team. Or it's about truth. And some people will be wrong. There are groups that claim to be Christian. That aren't by the definition of what they proclaim. There are uh, individuals that claim to be Christian. But don't follow it in a way that you've ever known. There are people in other parts of this world they don't know what the word Christian means, but are living Christian life, and they know God through that experience. So, send those bias and look for the truth, not just for those on the truth. You are listening to the Jesus Christ Channel. Who asked your question? Sally Henderson, 520 1534. Last minute, how did you get ready? I'm not going to buy you free, I mean, I got a radio app. Hmm. Hmm.
offering the most 15 year fixed rates at 1.875% with a 2.01 APR. Incredible! Network Capital has built a reputation for saving people time and money with our unique process that's fast, simple, and secure. Our 15 year fixed rate is 1.875% with a 2.01 APR. Second chances don't come often, and you may never see these rates again. So refinance it and forget it. That's a 15 year fixed rate at 1.875%. Yes, 1.875% with a 2.01 APR. Call the experts at Network Capital now. Call 800 500 number one hit. 800 501 HIV. As in home run. Call now and save big on your refi. 800 501 hit. 800 500 1448. Now, the stock markets at a record high. Again, things are looking up. Houses are selling in a week. Interest rates are still crazy low. And to top it all off, the government borrowed, eh, sorry, printed $5 trillion in new money. You might have noticed that all of this doesn't add up. It's like those plates spinning on top of those sticks. When they stop, it all comes crashing down, right? You need to keep your cash safe, not crashing down. Using precious metals is a well-proven way to do this. In a gold or silver IRA 401k rollover, you even get tax breaks while you bomb-proof your money. To find out how you can do this, you need to talk to one of Noble Gold's representatives. They're patient and knowledgeable and can help you navigate the precious metals market. This month, Noble Gold is giving away a free America the Beautiful Solid Silver 5 ounce coin with any qualifying IRA that you start. Call 877-646-5347 now to find out more or visit our website at noblegoldinvestments.com. Stock and weather from KFI, mostly sunny for your Sunday with highs around 60 at the beaches, low 60s for the LA Basin, Inland OC, Valleys, and IE. Mid 50s in the high desert, mid 40s in the mountains. Uh, another chance for some rain possibly moving in midweek. Right now it's 46 degrees in Orange, 47 in Rancho Santa Margarita, 42 in Harupa Valley, 50 in Malibu. We need local, live from the KFI 24 hour newsroom. I'm Layla Mohammed.
people who descend the nativity scene at Christmas, and they do it in such a way that kind of drives you crazy. What's that? Uh, well, they say it's, it's baby Jesus' birthday, it's your birthday, mm -hmm. but they don't really elucidate or they don't really give the full meaning of what Jesus did as a man, and, and any more than like when people say, Happy birthday, George Washington. It's not just a baby. It's what he did in life. I and see. So you're saying focusing just on the birth is missing the point of the life, the death, and the resurrection. Yes. I, I did a little thinking about why we celebrate Jesus' birthday, your mm -hmm. birthday. And it came to me that knowing the man as we do through the Bible, mm -hmm. uh, what he did, what you did, mm -hmm. um, my God, it's the most powerful word in the entire world. He overcame, you overcame the world, the flesh, and the devil. Mm -hmm. And and through the resurrection and with love. So I just think that it, sometimes when people try to defend why they want the nativity scene or why they want um, displays of Christmas or even why we say Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm. It's because we are then focusing on the most powerful word in the world because it's love. So anyway, that's my definition of, I wanted your thoughts on how to define the Christ life. Well, it, it, well yeah, Christ, it, it comes from the Greek word uh, Christos. It means the anointed one. And obviously it is uh, a, a translates the Hebrew word that is used uh, to mean Messiah. Uh -huh. So the anointed one is very, very powerful. And I, and I hear what you're saying, that, that ultimately the, they're focusing so, their sight seems narrow. They're focusing so much on this one part, it's not illuminating the, the reason why the birth would be important at all, which is uh -huh. about the life and the times and the death and resurrection. Um, I, I think that you can get super hyper-focused uh, on that, and, and you too can lose sight of what's going on. I think that the defense sometimes is uh, the feeling that Christians get when they feel they're being picked on, or that their rights are kind of becoming second uh, class, um, mm -hmm. and therefore that you know everyone else, even pagan belief systems around. You know, you can put pagan symbols up around Halloween and, and mm -hmm. schools and. Everything else is fine with it, but if you do any Christian symbols, people start getting uptight. And I think it's kind of what they're defending. Now, to your concern, Betsy, I think that you're you're right in saying that that people should understand the fullness of what's going on. We said on the show many times that the term "Jesus loves you" means nothing unless you know who Jesus is, what love is, and who you are. So, yes, the defining the principles and why why the uh, nativity scene would be important at all uh, would be a wonderful thing sometimes in battle uh, the words become abbreviated because it's, you know, the focus is uh, to those people to say the nativity scene for what it stands for but ultimately if you don't stand, if you don't uh, say what what it stands for then the nativity scene means nothing and people get lost in that and, and uh and really, it's kind of just an understanding that there would be no death and resurrection if I hadn't been born. And so to celebrate the beginning and all parts of it, if you understand God in His fullness, God is uh, a God of beginning, middle, and end, most certainly. A God of Gethsemane, Calvary, and the empty tomb. All three are important. And uh, so that, that time spent in the garden was important. Uh, the time on the cross was important. And the time... Uh, resurrection, obviously, ultimately important, but in part we talk about in Scripture because they all play an importance to uh, the entirety of the story, and that can't be lost either. So, uh, you, you see the, the balance of those two things, that uh, some people are fighting for something uh, in its infant stage because of what it means in its fullness, and I can see where you like to hear the entirety of it, and that this word is important, that Christ is a powerful statement because it's talking about the anointed one of God. But I think that's certainly in there and in, in what they're fighting for and what they're defending. You know, I've said this before that this time of year brings out a lot of that that poorly. It brings out a lot of the fights and you know the atheists will put up some sign about how 
uh, I didn't exist or something silly like that. And, and uh, theists and Christians come out of uh, their churches and put up uh, billboards and signs and you hear about people fighting for nativity scenes. And really, ultimately, that the what those nativity scenes st uh, stand for really is the most important, absolutely. That if it wasn't for um, the birth, death, and resurrection, then all of Christianity is for not. And to defend that's a wonderful thing. But symbols and symbolism, and we want our uh, our particular belief system represented, is really more about culture than it is about faith. Um, faith cannot be dictated by any government. Uh, especially Christianity because of the fact that it can be practiced in your heart and that you want to be able to worship as you please most certainly in the United States but uh, the concept of who God is never changes no matter what anybody says and you can put up a nativity scene and you know uh, it won't necessarily help anybody and you can take it down it won't necessarily hurt anybody the important thing is that Christians are living in a way that other people can see and experience in a very, very real way. Otherwise, you just see people that are fighting for their cultural likes or dislikes or their wants, uh, and it gets lost in that. So as, these, uh, as this holiday tends to bring out those people defending the nativity, which I think is fine, um, just keep in mind that the nativity is just a thing. It's the setting up of this display is just a thing that really the value of it lies in uh, the life-changing power of the death and resurrection. That that's where the power lies. That's where it, what it's all about. And that's what Christmas is all about. And everybody focuses on that on, on Easter. But really, Christmas is just as much about that. It's about the beginning, the nesting stages of uh, Christianity and the importance and the power of the things to come. <laughs> What's all the buzz about nasal irrigation and navage, navage, navage? And should I try it? Here's the science. Airborne germs invade through your nose. It's the body's air filter for trapping allergens and viruses. When your nose gets clogged, it's less effective and germs multiply. Eventually, your immune system can get overwhelmed and you get sick. Nasal irrigation is an effective, all-natural way to clean your nose. It's not a drug. It's more like plumbing. Saline goes in one nostril, around the back of the nose, and out the other nostril, flushing out mucus and germs. I'm Martin Hope, and I invented Navage to make cleaning your nose easy. It's the world's only nose cleaner with powered suction. Navage pulls out the bad stuff so you can breathe better, sleep deeper, snore less, and feel healthier. At Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, Target, Bed Bath, and Walmart. Or go to Navage.com for a free gift for purchase. Over 2 million sold. Navage, N-A-V-A-G-E. Clean nose, healthy life. This report is sponsored by Audible. Audible is the best place to listen for everything you're into, from comedy and motivation to popular podcasts and best-selling audiobooks. Right now, take advantage of a special holiday offer and save 60% on your first three months. Learn more and sign up at audible.com. With COVID-19 still looming, your holiday season might be more stress than cheer. CalHope can help with free emotional support. Call 833-317-4673 or live chat at calhope.org today. As parents, we've done everything we can to keep our kids safe, happy, and healthy during this pandemic. From finding the best face masks to making sure their hands are clean. And now we have the best tool to help keep them even safer. Well, the most important thing we can do is vaccinate our kids to protect them against COVID-19. Vaccines have been proven safe and effective for children five and up. Talk to your child's doctor or visit myturn.ca.gov to find a vaccine near you. Brought to you by the California Department of Public Health. More and more parents are exploring homeschooling. If not in your own family, you probably still know someone who is. 
you need to check out a Stella's Power Homeschool. Power Homeschool is the official program offered by Stella's for parents homeschooling their children. At powerhomeschool.org, you'll see how this program keeps parents in control of their children's education by offering online courses right in your home. Taught by some of America's greatest teachers. It's a way to keep your students learning at grade level while allowing for more parental influence and involvement. Parents are reporting that it is especially effective for struggling students and students with learning disabilities. This is because of Stellus is a homeschool learning accelerator. If you're going to homeschool, you will still be responsible to get your students to spend time studying every day. But with a Stellus Power Homeschool, they can get a quality education studying at home. It's not too late for the fall school season. Check out a Stellus Power Homeschool.